James, and uh, I'm going to be presenting to you guys Balanced Forces. Uh, along with me, there is Nestor the Space Law located above my top left shoulder. So let us begin. So to start off with, we're going to introduce what student ideas that are common. And these are the ones we're going to be addressing in this presentation. So to start off with, if an object isn't moving, then no forces are acting on it. Second one is if an object is moving, some force is acting on it. Um, and the third one we're going to go for a more practical, real-world example. If you drop an object from a plane, it will either speed up forever, or if you ask a different student, he may say it reaches a constant speed because it is fully accelerated. Uh, the problems coming up here, and the last one is basically they may not know the underlying reason. If you ask them why does it reach a constant final speed, they will say it's just it just has. They don't know the reasoning behind it, maybe. Um, some will, some won't. That's what we're here to address is the ones that don't. So the first one we're going to look at is balanced forces for a moving object. So this is an object which has a constant velocity and it has some forces acting on it. So in the case we're going to look at a practical example, real world example of a plane. So if we ask a student about this plane and we'll ask them what forces are acting on it, um, it's very likely they will list the force of the engine and also probably force due to gravity, maybe, depends on how advanced they are. And then, of course, the force, the wings that lift it up, otherwise a plane would just be a car if it had nothing that forced it to be lifted up, or caused it to be lifted up, I should say. So, we ask them that, and we say, okay, so where would you say the total force is? Um, and based on what they show, um, the whole force on wings, force of engine, and force of gravity, they may show that, yes, it is flying at a flat line, but there's a force pushing it forward, otherwise I would have this velocity. So then we show them this example, oh, and it flies up forever. So that's in the case if you ignore gravity. Um, in this example, we also had a constant velocity. But in reality, there are two more forces, one being gravity, which some would say. Um, but the bigger one is the force of the air resistance. Now, this is a force that is dependent upon velocity. And so the larger the velocity, the larger the force of the air resistance. Where this comes in is that the force of the engine is pushing the plane forward, and as the plane accelerates, its velocity increases. As its velocity increases, the force of the air resistance also increases. At some point, these forces will be equal. The plane will still have a velocity, but its acceleration will now be zero. What this means is, in uh, scientific terms, the sum of the forces in the x direction is now zero. Now, relating this to Newton's second law, we know that force equals ma mass times acceleration. Therefore, if the net force in the x direction is zero, either the mass is zero or the acceleration is zero. Now, we know that the plane has not lost any mass, therefore the acceleration must be the term that has gone to zero. That is okay because we still have that very high velocity, and in the same respect, the force in the wings and the force of gravity are also equal. So there, we say that the net force in the y direction is zero. Um, what this means is that, in this case, there is no velocity in the y direction, but we still have a position. Um, so the plane will still be flying in the air at a constant height, but it will be moving forward in the x direction with a constant velocity. So on to our next example will be an object free falling. In this case we'll be dropping a cactus from a, a plane for our practical real world example um, because that's something that students encounter on a daily basis is a cactus being dropped from a plane. So that's a what it pretty much looks like. That's what you expect. So, moving on, um, we have this cactus and he's falling. So initially, when he does fall out of the plane, this is another student con um, misconception, is that what will its velocity be? Well, the should should be like, okay, it starts with no velocity in the y direction, but it will pick up speed. And that is true. But then you ask him what about in the x direction? Well, some may say correct, um, but you may find that often students will say that it has no velocity in the x direction. This is a misconception in the case that, yes, it will actually have some velocity in the x direction because it should have the same speed that the plane did. Now, what's interesting is that this speed will yet again result in a force of air resistance against it as the cactus leaves the plane. Um, as, this, as it immediately leaves, it has the highest velocity in the x direction, therefore it will have the highest force of air resistance opposing this velocity. Therefore, it will have a negative acceleration in the x direction. This negative acceleration will cause the velocity in the x direction to slowly decrease. And as this velocity in the x direction decreases, 
the force of air resistance will also decrease until finally the force of air resistance in the x direction goes to zero. This is interesting because, so initially it has the largest force acting on it, but as time goes on that force will decrease until he's moving straight down as opposed to moving at his angle towards the ground. Now, now when we look in the y direction, we see that the force of air resistance will actually be the smallest when we drop him from the plane because in that case he will be moving the slowest. Remember we said that the force of air resistance is proportional to velocity and when we drop him in that y direction he has zero velocity initially. So as time goes on though this force of air resistance in the y direction will increase and it will increase up to the point that it will be exactly equal to the force of gravity. This makes sense because if the force of air resistance was greater than the force of gravity and that means it'd start to experience a acceleration in the positive y direction. If this acceleration continued, you'd eventually have the cactus flying back up into the air, which we find in real life does not happen. So once force of gravity and force of air resistance are equal, um, you will still have that velocity um, due to the acceleration, but you will no longer gain additional velocity from that gravity acceleration. So in this case, we will have yet again balanced forces. So, um, to say that in science, to show that with math, the sum of the forces in the y direction is zero, the sum of the forces in the x direction is zero. Um, he still has some velocity, it's in the negative y direction, but he's not gaining any more velocity. So, how we show this in the real world example again is we have the rock versus feather example. So students often will say, yes, in the real world, the rock will reach the ground quicker than the feather, and this is true, as you can see, you drop a feather, it'll slowly drift, and the rock will fall immediately. Now, um, we'll take this to a different area. We'll take this to a place in space. Um, in this example, in the example previously, we had air resistance. So the air resistance was much larger on the feather due to a larger surface area, and the force of it was much less. Um, the ratio of the force of air resistance is much less compared to the force of gravity. Therefore, the rock will fall much quicker because the force of gravity will it would take a much longer time for those two to be, um, become equal, whereas in the feathers case, the force of air resistance and the force of gravity take much less time. Now if we put it in a vacuum, you will find that the air resistance no longer matters, so they should both have the same acceleration, which can be seen in this case, they both fall exactly the same rate. So, in conclusion, a moving object can still have balanced forces. Um, that does not mean, just because something has a velocity does not mean that there is some force pushing on it. All it means is that it is no longer gaining additional velocity. Um, that's all balanced forces mean. So when you have a stationary object, the same thing, nothing, the balanced forces mean that it is gaining no acceleration in the y, x, z direction. So, still works for that. And then, whenever you dropped an object, no matter what object it is, the, the force of the air resistance will eventually equal the force of gravity. Um, this is true for any case. However, if the object can change its shape while falling, then you will encounter a more complex situation. But if it's at least staying completely still, the force of air resistance will eventually equal force of gravity, and that will happen until whatever object hits the ground. So I hope this clarified some uh, any of the issues you may have had with um, balanced forces, and uh, thank you for watching.